we are live. This is technically Math 75, Mathematical Analysis for Business, but in reality, this video could be for almost any level of mathematics, as long as you're looking for an interval notation review. If you're looking for something else, this video won't be very helpful, although it may be amusing. So, you know, it's not completely wasted time. So we're going to talk about how to write answers in terms of intervals. So the first thing is, what the heck is an interval? And basically, what we're talking about when we talk about intervals is rather than having a single number, like x equals 12, that's a single number. That's really easy. Um, we're talking about a range of numbers. For example, x is less than 4. Now, there are a bunch of numbers that are less than four. Three is less than four. Zero is less than four. Negative 400,536,007 is less than zero. And it's also less than four. So there are a ton of answers. So trying to write them all out individually really would take literally forever. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a couple ways that you can give this answer. The first being this. This is the inequality. Or an inequality statement. And that's x is less than 4. Then I could have a graph. And when I graph, I have a couple of options. In my class, I've asked my students to always find zero and the number you're interested in. So for example, let's say zero is here and four is here. In reality, zero could be pretty much anywhere and four just needs to be to the right of it somewhere. This spacing would change depending on what you need it, what more you need to do with it. So I'm gonna find the zero and I'm gonna find the four and I'm gonna say, okay, X is less than four. So I'm going to color in this side, the left side of the graph. Frequently we write an arrow to emphasize the fact that it's not just a few values, it just keeps going to the left for forever. Again, literally. Now the trick is to say, what are we doing here at the four? Well, x is strictly less than four, which means it cannot be equal to four. So I'm going to use either the parenthesis to emphasize the four just slides right out. It's like a wee. If it were Godzilla, Godzilla would be a wee. And so four is not included. Another way to write this similarly is to use an open circle. Let me get this colored in. Now, what does an op open circle work? Well, if I am holding a pen like this, if the circle is closed, the pen stays in. If the circle is open, the pen falls out. In the same way, if the circle is open, the point falls out. The point's not there anymore. And this is also four. I'm gonna write the four below because it didn't seem like there was a lot of room there. Um, depending on your graph, you may wanna have the arrow there as well to, to express that the that number line keeps going in both directions. It, the arrows are a matter of style. You'll see in various textbooks, sometimes they include them, sometimes they don't. I like them, um, but you know, refer to your own teacher in the book and you know, figure out what, what style is gonna communicate what you're trying to say the best way. So that's the inequality, that's the graph. And now we're gonna to get to interval notation. Interval notation. Notation just means the way we write it or the way we express it with symbols. And with the interval notation, what we're gonna tr try to do is we're gonna try to capture this graph, but without having to draw a whole graph. So I'm generally gonna try to come up with a beginning point and an end point. In this case, the beginning point is way over there and it's, it's conceptual. There is no official actual beginning point it pretty much just goes to the left forever. So to express that, I'm going to use a negative infinity, which is not a number, except for those of you who are going to go become engineers, and then you can come back and we can have a great argument about this. But uh, uh, spoilers, the mathematicians are correct. Um, negative infinity, not a number. Um, so I have an open parenthesis here. So that's my left 
quote unquote end point. And then my right end point is my four. Now, why, why might I be putting it in quotes? Well, it isn't really included. So we go all the way up to four, but not equal to four. So again, I do a round parenthesis. And I know this is this looks like Popeye. I've got one big parenthesis, one little one. I, I apologize for that. They should be the same size. But basically it says it goes from negative infinity, which is, which is conceptual. It means all the way to the left, all the way up to four. Don't include four. So we've got these three different ways to describe a range of numbers. And the trick is, is if you're going to be studying math, you need to know each of them and know that if I give you the graph, you should be able to come up with these two. If I gave you the interval, you should be able to come up with these two. So any one of these can lead to the other two. So three different ways to write it. Shall we continue? Woohoo, let's continue. Okay, so the inequality here, x is less than or equal to four. Now we're going to allow up to and including four, so slightly different. I'm still gonna find my zero and my four on my graph. And I want to do both, both flavors, both styles of graph on this one, because I want it to allow four to stay in. I'm going to give four somewhere to stand on. That's a square bracket. Or as I showed you before, I'm going to use a closed circle, a circle that holds the point. Again, we're less than or equal to. So we're going to go off to the left. And I like to include the arrow to the right, which I know some people are like, wait, that's confusing. And the answer is, well, I'm trying to emphasize that the points are only aligned right here. These are, this is just the number line without any points highlighted. Interval notation, hopefully you're starting to, you're like, oh, wait, this goes right like that. Look at how parallel those are. So probably here for our interval notation, again, we start at negative infinity, which again, conceptual, not an actual number. And we go all the way up to four, but in this case, we're going to emphasize with the bracket. Now, some people have suggested to me that the bracket is easy to remember because it kind of looks like the top and the bottom are an equal sign. So there's the equal sign right there. So that helps, that's awesome. I always think of it as a nice solid place to stand. Whereas this one is like a slide. The four just goes whee right out and doesn't stay in. Okay, so I hear you asking, but what if we're talking about something that goes in the other direction? That is a really excellent question. What if X is greater than four? Same thing, I'm gonna find my zero and my four. And again, the fact that I find two points on my number line may be different than what your instructor or your book is telling you. It, there are a lot of different styles to this. However, the important part is I'm going to start at four and go bigger. So I'm actually going to go in this direction. But because it is not an equal to, x is greater than four, but not equal to four, I'm going to use either the parenthesis or the open circle at the four. And in fact, this one kind of, this is the point in class when I would say, look, a pterodactyl, and then quickly erase it and do a better job. But um, basically that parenthesis should touch the wherever you've announced four is. Helpful hint, if I had thought ahead, I wouldn't put the four in first. I do the parenthesis and then say that's where the four is. That's how you do it professionally. I'm gonna include the arrow to the left because they're number lines. That's what I like to do. Now here, people get really excited and they wanna go back to this one. But keep in mind, the interval is written in order. So it starts on the left with negative infinity and goes up to four. So we can't do infinity and then four because they they're not arranged that way. I have to start at four. So four is the beginning point, beginning end point, And I keep going positively all the way up, again, conceptually to infinity, which just basically means it keeps going forever, forever and ever and ever and ever. Okay, similarly, I've got my zero and I'm gonna be smart this time. Notice I, I am a tool using human who can learn. X is greater than or equal to four. So either I'm gonna use my square bracket, notice it's now facing this direction 
or my closed circle. Woohoo, woohoo. And again, here, I'm gonna start with a four and keep going forever. Woohoo, page one is done. Isn't that beautiful? Don't we love intervals? Ooh, it's so pretty. Okay, so now let's talk about some slightly more interesting situations. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so the first one. This is actually, this looks very complicated and it is complicated to say negative four is less than X. And then you can either say which is less than or equal to four, or you could say negative four is less than X is less than or equal to four. You could just do a run on sentence. So you can make it sound like prettier English or just utilitarian English, it's up to you. Basically you have to describe both of these. Negative four is less than X and X is less than or equal to four, or, and I like this one, X lies between negative four and four. Now the problem with saying it that way is people don't know necessarily whether negative four is included or four is included. And you can talk about this as a half open or a half closed interval. You could um, talk about inclusive and exclusive. So if you're trying to do it with language, this one's a little tricksy. But on a graph, it's actually really great because you just, you find the negative four, you find the four and they can be wherever you want them to be. And there's a negative four. Here's my four. Hmm. I can go back to blue. I'm gonna draw inside. So I keep X inside the interval. And then I see at negative four, it's, it's a strict less than. So we don't allow negative four to come to the party. It's, it's like a drop off situation. They're, they're like the parents, they can come to the party, they say hello, and then someone closes the door. They don't get to come to the party. But the four totally gets to come to the party. Yay. That's the dancing. Oh my goodness, you know what I did? Oh, I gotta fix this, okay. Nobody tell anyone. Shh. There. So this one, oh, I was so excited about the party. I blew it on the in, on the graph. So basically on this one, I got so excited about my parentheses. On this graph, these should be the same. Sorry about that. You start with an open circle and you end with a closed circle. Because again, negative four, not invited to the party. Four, totally invited to the party. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, how do you do the interval? Well, the interval is actually the easiest one to do because you just start it with a parenthesis at negative four and you end it with a bracket at four. Bam, just like that. Okay, so we've, we've gone through all of these. Hopefully, you know, they make sense. And now, now I'm gonna tell you a very sad story. And the very sad story is that it is possible to use math in all of it, its brilliant clarity for evil. And um, I'm gonna tell you a little story. I'm gonna tell you that the answer for whatever you are doing in math, turns out that you just have to make sure X is not equal to four. X could be anything else. It could be 17. It could be 136 sevenths. It could be negative pi. It could be, uh, you know, the principal square root of 17. I mean, there's so many options, actually an infinite number of options. Just don't let X equal four. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this gorgeous? Now, some people would ask, wait a minute, what, what does the graph look like? Well, the graph is a little weird, but it's not impossibly weird. Basically, you color in everything but the four, and there's an open circle. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're asking me, wait a minute, how do you do it with the parentheses? And the answer is, I don't think you do. 
I don't think you actually put the parentheses around the four like that or put the parentheses there. I would have to look into that. Um, I will tell you a little secret and that is that I have only learned the parenthesis and the bracket um, notation where I'm teaching currently, I had never seen that in my life. This is the way that I had always done graphs. So I would have to look this up. So I apologize because I'm not sure. And I probably should have checked the book ahead of time to see what the heck people want me to do there. This graph doesn't come up that often though. However, the interval does. And here's the sad part of the story. This is such a brilliantly, perfectly beautiful, pristine piece of information. Don't let X be four. So what does the interval notation look like? I almost hate showing this to you. So basically we want an interval that's going to show you all of these points and all of these points. Now, they don't all connect, right? They're not all, you can't just go straight through. It's not continuous. You have to jump over the point four. And so that's what we're going to do with our interval notation. We're going to go from negative infinity all the way up to four. Don't include four, though. And then we're going to start again at four, and we're going to go all the way to positive infinity. And then what are we going to do in the middle? Well, we're going to draw a giant, what looks like a capital U, which is actually a union, which is a lot like in math, just like unions anywhere else. A union is when you bring things together. Basically, we're going to take this piece and this piece and bring them together. Not on the graph, obviously they're never going to touch, but they're going to be in the same, like who gets to come to the party? All of these people and all of these people. So we're going to put the union in the middle. Now, why don't I like this? Well, if I ask you, what can X equal? Basically, this is you saying it could be negative 100, negative 99, negative 98, negative 97, negative 96, plus all the fractions, negative 400 over 13, and positive 58 over 12. And you're going to keep going until you get to four. And then you're going to say, not four, skip over four, and then keep going. And I personally think this is just so beautiful and I'm just, I've never been able to be, get talked into this, but if someone does make you write an interval notation, that's how you do it. There you go. Yay. Okay. So sorry, I couldn't make that a happy story, but hopefully it makes sense. You give, just give the answer. It's everything except for four. Okay, that's it. Hopefully you guys know everything there is to know about intervals now. Woohoo! And I will see you in whatever the next video is you watched. Math on, guys. Math on. <laughs>